if the government gets involved in policing speech, then yeah, that's straight up plain violation of the Constitution. I can agree with that. The question is more on the line about the research. The research side of things. Um, is it appropriate for, for the research to be done on that side? So earlier this week, I was talking a little bit about public information. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, not public information, public opinion and scientific research. And I'm going to continue a little bit on that vein, but also uh, highlight a few things of importance here. In that, one of the things that I think can really have an effect on public opinion is, of course, skewed perceptions and potentially biased perceptions of what something is. Um, in particular, whether it comes from the public or it comes deliberately from the scientists themselves. And so this article from the College Fix got me thinking about it. So I think it's worth leaping off from here. And there's also um, some things here uh, that we can talk about with respect to the grant dollars itself, um, which I will give credit, um, all credit due to the College Fix here, actually, because they did include some very important links in here if you want to um, find out more about the said grant itself um, for yourself, which I encourage you to do. DOJ funds $950,000 university project on dis and misinformation campaigns. So let's go into this a little bit. Watchdog groups warn about government policing inconvenient truths online. Clemson University is using federal funds to create technology meant to track what researchers consider to be patterns of, quote, mis, dis, and malinformation, end quote, by internet users, MDM otherwise. Researchers said they are taking steps to ensure their work is unbiased, but two watchdog groups online argued the project could be used to silence speech online. The Clemson Project, Networks and Pathways of Violent Extremism, Effectiveness of Mis- and Disinformation Campaigns, is funded by a $953,203 grant from the Department of Justice's National Institute of Justice. Now, before I go any further, a little bit of a primer. If you've been on this channel before, you've probably heard this primer before, but for those who may not have, um, <clears throat> universities themselves tend to compete, or rather should we say, the professors in different research teams um, compete for different grants that are offered by different agencies, but also by foundations, by private companies um, and the likes to do their said research. That is the most common way that research gets done. It's what's referred to oftentimes colloquially as soft money funding, meaning um, I or someone else who wanted to, who wanted to do research would have to go, you know, put in a grant, hopefully get the grant, and uh, then that grant is used to pay some or all of our salary, or some or part of, the, some or all of the salary of somebody else, if we have students working us working with us, for example. Um, so there are a number of different agencies within the federal government that uh, hand out grants to do research. The National Institute of Justice, which is under the Department of Justice, is one of those entities that does that. Um, you can also find this in NIH, NIAID, obviously, as well as um, EPA, Department of Interior, Department of State, Department of Labor. I think all of them, to some degree, have different research arms, and I will get into showing you that um, in a little bit, actually, just so you can see the point um, here, because there are a number of handy ways to go searching for that information if you're curious about what an agency is funding. Uh, <clears throat> is fund uh, what grants an agency is funding or has funded because uh, I'll put it to you this way in short version there's a lot of legal requirements that if something is funded by the federal government it must have that documentation somewhere accessible to the public. The researchers plan to map the spread of these campaigns quote around contentious public events end quote in real time according to an abstract. They will create, quote, an online dashboard with an MDM tracker that allows users to understand real-time campaigns and their diffusion. Now, a point of note here is to do is, is if they're doing this in real time, 
then it very much does depend <laughs> on what's happening in real time in the public. Is it something that, you know, one side is right about and the other side is doing a disinformation campaign? So it depends on who's, it depends a touch, at least, on what's going on <laughs> with the things that you're mapping. And that goes to the point about bias that others are uh, making. But anyway, Clemson described disinform a disinformation campaign as a coherent pattern of sustained false or inauthentic information created with an intent to with the intent to deceive in a statement to the College Fix. Quote, the grant help seeks to help policymakers, law enforcement officials, and community stakeholders understand how social media dis and misinformation campaigns operate, the university stated. This will include identifying the type of events most likely to be the target of disinformation campaigns and identifying the characteristics, patterns, and methods of the organizations and other actors engaged in these campaigns, the university told the fix. Another term used in the research project, malinformation, is defined as, quote, information that may be based on a fact, uh, or on fact, rather, but used out of context to mislead, harm, or manipulate, according to the Department of Homeland Security report. Now, this raises an interesting question to me because one of the consistent problems <laughs> is consistent definitions um, across a number of these different things, as you'll find out. So that's why, I mean, admittedly, I'm actually quite glad the, um, I'm quite glad this is actually um, putting in a lot of links to these certain things and actually talking about the definitions that the authors are using. Um, I'm sorry, that the researchers are using in their project. That's actually quite relevant. So again, I do actually give some props to the College Fix for doing that because there can be some easy, easy fill in the gaps that a person might do with this is my definition of misinformation. So I'm going to put this in here when there's misinformation mentioned. So at least it is in the article here somewhere. Now, <clears throat> I'll get into that. Ari Perlinger, pictured a co-principal investigator for the Clemson Project, told The Fix he plans to automate most of the research process to remove potential threats of bias. Quote, the process of identifying accounts connected to specific campaigns, for instance, will be conducted with off-the-shelf software that identifies and collects information about language behavior and interaction between accounts, Perlinger told The Fix in an email. He said they also plan to use tools specifically designed to reduce researcher bias and increase validity of results. Now, obviously, because they just started this project, we're not going to know for sure. Um, if, their, if their things work. And unlike others, I am not going to jump to conclusions and say, you know, this, this is guaranteed to be, um, to be the case. You don't know that until they really get started. I'm skeptical about it for other reasons. I am skeptical about it. And the reason I'm skeptical about it is because, well, who then is made the automated process? How is it made? And is it itself demonstrated to not necessarily have any particular bias to it in how it was constructed? I.e., if it is a model of some kind, then that model depends upon a bit what you train it with, particularly if it's any kind of statistically related model <laughs> um, in this particular instance. So that's just the only note that I want to make about that. And I will give, I give the authors and the researchers here a lot of credit that they're actually talking about it because there is a certain kind of transparency that's needed with all of this kind of stuff. Um, let's see. Conservatives have raised concerns that academia and government agencies use terms such as misinformation to describe information and opinions they do not like. Quote, the federal government's involvement in policing so-called disinformation, or what some of us would call inconvenient truths, should send a chill down everyone's spine, like Davis, founder and president of the Internet Accountability, Accountability Project, told The Fix. It's plainly unconstitutional. Um, this, this, is, this is where I get crossover from a science question to a legal question, and I... Do not profess the legal expertise to get into that. But if the government gets involved in policing speech, then yeah, that's straight up plain violation of the Constitution. Can agree with that. The question is more on the line about the research. The research side of things. Um, is it appropriate for, for the research 
to be done on that side. And whether we like it or not, yeah, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with the research on said topic again. Carefully addressing issues of potential bias is the question there. Um, so that's a whole legalese thing. But <clears throat> this kind of thing, though, I'm glad to see some healthy, to bring it back to the point about public opinion and science, I'm glad to see some healthy criticism, healthy criticism with respect to the potential that it could be misused. Scientific research could be misused here because what are we after with science? We're after the truth, right? Potential to misuse things does very much happen. Um, and that is a demonstrable concern with something like this. Um, and right now, a lot of the public is very much on, very much on edge with this kind of thing. I can understand that. Um, <clears throat> so I think it is quite relevant and quite good that you have a certain degree of transparency in this discussion um, here. And I hope that continues to be the case. Now, speaking of which, I wanted to point this out um, because... I think not a lot of folks know that they can go find this particular information, but again, this is why I am very pleased that the College Fix put it right here in the actual, um, put the link for it actually right here in the original uh, copy here that they wrote, because it links over to this page, um, which actually summarizes information about the grant. And as I said, a lot of this stuff, if it is funded by any agency of the federal government, there has to be some documentation somewhere of who received it, um, how much was it, documentation about the project itself, um, and possible links to documentation about, you know, the relevant funding call. Because the way it works is that an agency will put out a request for proposals on a particular topic that they want more research into. And the different universities, actually more like, more like the different teams of professors or different professors by themselves, will compete for that particular grant funding from that proposal call. And it can happen many different ways. Usually, for example, like one particular procedural thing is, you know, there's something called a statement of intent or a letter of intent, which is just to say, hey, I have this idea. I intend to apply for this grant. Based upon that, the agency may say, okay, you know, we want to hear more or no, go shove it, right? Um, and sometimes you can still apply even if they say go shove it. But if you are invited after the letter of intent stage to submit a proposal, then you can get into um, the actual full proposal writing. That's sort of generic process. Full proposals are pr produced, written, sent off. Um, usually it is the university of the lead PI acting on behalf of the professor, which is why you see Clemson um, in here instead of necessarily, you know, the specific PI from Clemson um, in here. <clears throat> but after that, they're generally reviewed by external peer reviewers, much like um, journal articles are reviewed by external peer reviewers, um, people external to the journal themselves, so too are many grants from the federal government. There is also some internal reviewers that happen and Bob's your uncle if you pass all those reviews and they recommend it for funding. Then the agency comes back and says, yeah, you've been funded. That's the general basic process. There's a lot of details and nuance behind it, but that is the basic process behind this. Um, whether it be, you know, Department of Justice or Department of Interior, and some things can get more, some proposal calls can get more complicated than others, such things like NSF, National Science Foundation is a good example of that. But uh, from here, you can actually see more about the grant itself. You can see that they only just started um, recently, so, you know, they're going to take, um, take their time in doing research, um, and it should be an interesting time for them to do that because uh, obviously we're in an election year, so We'll see what happens with that. Um, you can see the amount that was obligated here. Um, if you scroll down over time, you will see what has been um, allocated. Um, or what, where are the, do, 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 do. view the transactions table. Yep. Um, and you can see uh, the different, the different things going on here in terms of the numbers and, and the funding associated with it um, in here. So, um, and spent out over time is basically the, uh, the essential idea there. Um, with that, you know, how much, oh, okay, yeah, that's the full grant dollars they granted for that. Okay. Um, uh, <clears throat> and of course you can see a description, um, with this also. And so 
let's see here, goals. Investigating, reducing, and preventing mis, dis, and malinformation has become a top priority for governments, private organizations, and researchers. Nationally publicized political events often become focal points of MDM, which are exploited by various individuals and groups to launch, launch disinformation campaigns and trigger spontaneous or crowdsourced diffusion of disinformation and violent extremism. In this context, this project seeks... They defined everything else. I would love to know how they define that, to be honest. I'm curious. In this context, this project seeks to answer the following overarching questions. Number one, what characteristics of high-profile events are more likely to trigger online MDM campaigns? Number two, what network patterns are associated with online MDM clusters and dissemination pathways, and what are the technical characteristics of more vulnerable platforms? Number three, what are the common characteristics of organizations and other actors engaged in MDM campaigns? Number four, what are the key things and linguistic features of MDM campaigns and how do they vary across disseminators and adopters? Research design, the above questions will be answered by conducting the first real-time mapping of the spread of MDM campaigns around contentious public events. Accordingly, the proposal team will, de will A, develop specialized algorithms to identify the creation of MDM campaigns and capture event-level characteristics with, of real-life events which trigger MDM, which again is mis, dis, and mal information, by the way. We love our acronyms. B, identify online MDM clusters and dissemination pathways, and C, use computerized linguistic tools for MDM content and sentiments analysis, and M, examine its association with users' behaviors. In the first phase, the team will produce an original events level data set that documents real-time characteristics of MDM triggering political events. In the second phase, advanced computational tools will be deployed to monitor MDM campaigns in near real time and identify specific accounts or nodes linked to outsized contributions. The team will also map MDM network patterns, identifying variation across creators and adopters, and complete computer-assisted linguistic and sentiments analysis of MDM content. Impact. The outcomes of the proposed project will help shape responses to MDM and will be useful for policymakers, law enforcement officials, as well as community stakeholders to maximize impact. And the team, the team will develop outreach materials and an online dashboard with an MDM tracker that allows users to understand real-time campaigns and their diffusion. The dashboard will provide a multi-level framework to understand the determinants and the characteristics of MDM outbreaks and identify links between specific linguistic characteristics and their virality. Additionally, the MDM tracker will provide insights into the commonalities and differences amongst online behaviors of MDM adopters, non-adopters, and disseminators. So <clears throat> that is the summary of that particular grant. Um, one moment. So one of the things I just wanted to go find real quick, which is why this is a tiny bit of a break, is that um, one of the things that you can also look up with these grants, with with the agencies, is what they're funding. And that actually happens to be through something called grants.gov, um, where you can go ahead and find in here. And actually, all I have selected in this is um, actually all the ones under that particular um, under that particular part of the Department of Justice. Actually, it's uh, just that National Institute, or at least it should have been, just that National Institute of Justice, or at least it should have been um, in here. But you can, oh, well, no, actually, I deselected it before. Never mind. But you can actually go in and sort for just about any different agency in here. And you can see it pretty uh, pretty cleanly what I was talking about, that a lot of these different agencies do offer their own particular grants funding as related to research um, in here. And you can even search by the category that we're talking about um, in this particular um, particular thing. So, I mean, law, justice, legal services, all those other kinds of things. So if you're really curious about what an agency is, um, is supporting, uh, well, not supporting, is seeking to have research on. And so what grants different university folks would be competing in. This is actually what I encourage you to go look through. Um, because, you know, it's it's important to keep an eye on the thing, kinds of things that are being funded, um, uh, in particular, and, and the like there with that. But if, if only because of the last thing that there really needs to be is a drop in the trust in scientists, which there has been, um, according to previous research I've talked about previously. Um, but but it doesn't necessarily have to continue. Um, but at the same time, 
it is wise to be looking at these particular kinds of things. And so I think the College Fix did a great job with this particular article. Um, and I also think it's a good idea to go fishing around and looking for these different things. So I will be providing links for you in the description as always. So let me know what you think. Hit the like button on the way out the door, comment on the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, all that lovely good jazz. Till next time, I'm Adrian. Stay curious.